Hello and welcome back. We're going to be using the experimenter quite a lot in this course. So in lesson 1.3, I'm going to show you how to use it to compare classifiers. So here's a question. Is J48 better than 0R and 1R on the Iris data set? And of course, we could fire up the Explorer. You know how to do this, so I'm not going to do it for you. We can open the data set. We can uh, get the results for these uh, three different machine learning methods. And we can see that J48 uh, with a 96% cross-validation accuracy is better than 1R, which is better than 0R. But the question is, how reliable is this comparison? I mean, things could change if we chose a, happen to choose a different random number seed. So the experimenter uh, helps produce more reliable comparisons uh, between uh, data sets and classification algorithms. I'm going to fire up the experimenter. I'm going to open the Iris data set and use the same three classification, classification algorithms and compare them. So here we are in the experimenter. I'm going to uh, create a new experiment. I'm going to open a data set. I'm going to add three classification algorithms. I can reorder these algorithms, by the way, if I select one and go up, and select another one and go down. I can reorder them. I'm going to go to Run and run this. And then I'm going to go to the Analyze panel, click Experiment, that's important, and then click Perform Test. So back to the slides here. Uh, that's what I did. I switched to the uh, Analyze panel and uh, clicked these things and got these results, which look like this, actually. Uh, now we can see the three figures for the three classification algorithms on the IRIS data set. And uh, we can see that both 1R and 0R are worse than J48, just looking at the numbers. The star means that 0R is significantly worse than J48. And the absence of a star on 1R means that we cannot be sure that 1R is significantly worse than J48 at the 5% level of statistical significance. In other words, J48 seems better than 0R, and we're pretty sure at the 5% level that this is not due to chance. And it seems to be better than 1R, but this may be due to chance. We can't rule it out at the 5% level of statistical significance. Now I could add a bunch more data sets. In fact, I'll just go and do that. And I'll rerun the experiment. Take a little bit of time. And then I'll analyze the results. And over here on the slide, these are the results I get. So I can see that at the 5% level of significance, J48 is significantly better than both 1R and 0R on three of the data sets. That's looking at the stars. The star means that those methods are significantly worse than the J48. In other words, it's significantly better than them. And uh, it's significantly better than 1R in breast cancer and German credit, and it's significantly better than 0R on iris and diabetes data set. So you can see from the table of figures in the stars where the significant results are. Now, what if we wanted to compare 1R? If we wanted to know whether 1R was significantly better than 0R, uh, this does not tell us on this slide. Uh, to do that, we need because on this slide we're comparing everything with J48. If we go back to the experimenter and select something different for the test base, I'm selecting 1R for the test base and performing the test. Now I've got 1R uh, in the first column and things are being compared with it. So going back to the slide, uh, Having changed the test base, I can see that 1R is significantly worse than 0R on the German credit data set, about the same on the breast cancer data set, and significantly better on uh, all of the rest of the data sets. Another thing we can do is to sort of change the order of the rows and columns in this matrix. If I go back to uh, the experimenter and select for the row, 
Uh, currently, I'm going to currently the data set is selected. I'm going to select scheme for the row and for the column. Currently, scheme is selected. I'm going to select data set for the column and then perform the test again. And now we get the data sets uh, going along horizontally here. This is the list of data sets, and we get the uh, algorithms going vertically so that I can see. Uh, whether uh, the iris data set, whether J48 performs significantly better or worse on the iris data set than it does, say, on the breast cancer data set. So, what we've looked at is comparing classifiers. Uh, in statistical terms, people talk about the null hypothesis, that is, that one classifier's performance is the same as another. And the observed result is highly, the result that we observe, the numbers we observe, is highly unlikely if the null hypothesis is true. That is, we reject the null hypothesis. We reject the hypothesis that they're the same at the 5% level of statistical significance. So the experimenter tells you when the null hypothesis is being rejected. Or equivalently, we could say that A performs significantly better than B at the 5% level. Uh, in the experimenter, we can change the significance level. It's common to use 5%, 1% uh, for critical applications, maybe medical applications, perhaps 10% for less critical applications. Uh, we can change the comparison field. We've used percent correct, but we can change that in the explorer. And it's common to compare over a set of data sets. And we might say on these data sets, method A has so many wins and so many losses over method B, referring to the number of statistically significant times that A is better than B or B is better than A. There is a problem you ought to be aware of, the multiple comparison problem. If you make a large number of tests, some of them will appear to be significant just by chance. So. As usual, this is not an exact science. The interpretation of results requires a certain amount of care. All right, the activity associated with this uh, lesson will uh, ask you to do some more work with the uh, experimenter in comparing data sets and classification algorithms. Off you go and do that, and I'll see you in the next lesson. Bye for now.